Good morning. Good morning, Mallory Wesleyan Church. Good to have all of you here today, including those out in the fellowship hall, filter on in uh, as you get here. And uh, it's a nice day today. Um, there's a couple of things I want to make sure I cover today. Uh, one is, I don't know if it's just this week or what's been going on, but we've had some electrical difficulties in the church here and there. And today, our computer app happens to be out. So we don't have any projection today. Um, and so we have some lyric sheets for music, so make sure you gra grab those when you're coming in. Um, and then I'll do my best to muddle through my sermon today. We'll see how that goes. You can pray for me for that. That would be nice. Uh, in order for us to be together in worship, though, make sure you get those, those lyric sheets for the, the music today. Um, as a start off the service, uh, just a couple of announcements, um, that are things that are coming up. Um, we have our LBA board meeting on a Wednesday the 14th, um, and then in, a, in two weeks, September 18th, we are going to start again a, a series that I thought was, was pretty good this spring, um, The Chosen. You guys heard of The Chosen, seen The Chosen? A Bible, a Bible, we're going to do a Bible study based on The Chosen. We're on season two. Uh, we have study guides coming for those who are interested. Um, if you you can pick this up at any time because basically they're going through the life and story of Jesus. It's great. Um, it gives you a different insight into um, biblical um, time, time settings, culture, and those kind of things. And I think it's a good uh, thing to kind of look and reference actual scripture um, paired with that. Um, if you were someone that had watched that series and you're like, wow, I just really want to talk to somebody about what's going on in this series and what, what, what happened with Jesus and how this was this and that. It'd be a great time to come and share with us and have that time with us. Um, one thing I'm going to say, uh, an, an official announcement, kind of, I, I, I felt like I should say something about it. Um, the last couple weeks, uh, Grover and I have been talking um, about uh, guns a little bit. I don't know if you know, a state law had passed uh, or is in effect uh, as of September 1st about guns and churches being what we call sensitive places. Uh, and so there's a current law on the books that uh, if you have a gun in a church, it's a Class E felony. Now, I talked to the district about that, and they said we're not going to ask you to say if you have one or not. You know, we're not the police and we don't do that. But I just want to make sure you're aware of that at this point. Ultimately, we're here for God and not for that kind of thing. And Ultimately, uh, the constitutionality of that uh, amend, uh, that law is in question. I'm, I'm sh I know uh, I've talked with people from the Center for um, New York State for Constitutional Freedoms, and there's definitely challenges going on with that at this point. But I just want to let, make, make sure you were aware of that. Um, speaking of guns, on October 15th, it's not in your bulletin yet, it's going to be in there next week, but October 15th, um, all the men of, we call them the North Shore, or sorry, the North Zone, which is Watertown Church, Sandy Creek Church, Pine Meadows, Camden, Mallory, and Pulaski Church are, uh, what's up? What do you need? Uh oh. Anyone need a bulletin? I think we're good, bud. Thank you, Daniel. All right. Get him one. All right. We apologize for the commercial interruptions. We'll make sure. That's good. Uh, but uh, Pulaski, uh, Watertown, Sandy Creek, Pine Meadows, Camden, Mallory, all the all the people up in this north zone for the Wesleyan churches, we're going to have what they call a, uh, what are they calling it? Men's Challenge Competition. Trap shooting, can jam, cornhole, horseshoes, bocce ball, kind of a almost a retreat day for the men um, at the Sandy Creek River and Gun Club. Uh, it costs fifteen dollars, which caught, um, which covers lunch. Uh, guns are provided for the trap shooting. Um, I'm going to be going. I, I plan on going. It's going to be a fun time up there, uh, and there'll be a bit of a competition there. So that's October fifteenth. At the Sandy Creek River and Gun Club, uh, fifteen dollars covers lunch. 
for a men's manly competition. Now, men out there, if you're good at horseshoes, if you're good at shooting, if you're good, you know, I, I want Mallory to be out there and, and have some guys out there doing that kind of stuff. So that would be super fun to do. In addition, um, Ben and his, Ben Mackey, who's the pastor up at Watertown, is organizing this, as well as his wife, Kim, is organizing uh, Women's Day. They call it the Cozy Mountain Lodge, and that's going to be October 15th as well. Uh, find shelter in God. Fun, food, friends, worship, and devotionals free, but you have to zip up to Grace Wesley up in Watertown for that. So the women are having a get-together on the same day as the men on the 15th of October. Yes, Sue? Yeah, if you want to go, let me know so I can tell them some some root, some uh, maybe some numbers on that sort of thing. Because uh, I'd like to kind of, you know, be courteous and tell them that, that sort of thing. And I haven't heard yet if there is one, but tell me as soon as you know. So, are you going, Daniel? You're going to come with me, okay? But I'm not going to have you use a gun. Trust me. You won't want to use that yet. All right. All right. But that's October 15th, it's coming up um, in October, so save that date for that. Um, other announcements, other things going on? I have a question. Yes. To class you would not be even if you have a permit to carry? That is correct. So the governor of New York State had passed a law, even though, uh, even though people have concealed carry, there's even um, a, a provision on church property, so even if you have something like in your in your trunk of your car and you go, go skeet shooting afterwards and stuff. It's very controversial, I'll tell you, there's been lots of discussion about it, but as, like, as I said, I'm not going to be, we're not the police, we're not going to be um, policing people here at the church, come here to worship God, and, uh, you know, anyway, uh, but yes, that's where, we're, where, where, where the announcements are. Any other questions, announcements, things going on this morning? Does anyone have a scripture they want to share this morning as we start off our service? All right. I'm going to start from the beginning then, okay? All right. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 2, uh, for, for, through, uh, through 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And so if God can do that sort of thing with the primal elements around us, what can he do with you? What good because God's what God does. He makes things that are good. What good does he see in you? And that's my challenge for you this morning. Let's stand as we worship God together. Um, and join in worship celebration. Like I said, if you need one of those uh, lyric handouts, make sure you get one from the bulletin table there. And we'll go from there. Thank you. 
Take off from here for me. Uh, give as you feel led. You know, um, it is an act of worship to say that we love you more than these things. So we have to pray today. Lord God, bless this offering we're about to receive today. So that we used for your good. So it will be multiplied. So that we can have ministry here in Hastings and Valerie and 
the surrounding regions, Lord, that we can glorify you and, and praise your name. We grow leaders in this church and help us to continue to be strong in faith, and be a lighthouse and hope and light for those who are seeking God. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Sunday, there we go. It's the first Sunday of the month, and every first Sunday of the month, we celebrate uh, communion here at our church. Um, we celebrate open communion, which means if you have uh, accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've chosen Him to lead your life and guide you, you are more than welcome to take communion with us today. If you haven't made that commitment uh, to, to Jesus, I encourage you to do so. It'll change your life. Will change the life of those around you and uh, allow you to know him better and to know him more. Around churches around the earth right now are celebrating communion on Sundays, and so we partake with them as as the church uh, together uh, as a symbol, remembering Jesus' sacrifice, remembering his death on the cross. And what it means for our hearts and our lives, and the hearts and lives of others, and what it means for our eternity and our time in heaven. So I can have a couple of ushers come up and join me this morning. We're going to serve the bread first, and you are welcome to take the bread individually. Um, it's a cracker wafer, or sorry, matzo. And if you, uh, and we're going to hold the juice cup um, until until the end and use, and use that and drink that together. I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. One sec. Let's kind of get it open here. Give me one second there, Mary.
1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23. Paul says, For I have received from the Lord what I have also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he had broken it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after he took the supper, uh, supper cup, after supper he took the cup, saying, "This is my cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Take and eat." Jesus, 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 there's just something in the world that same manner he took the cup and said this is my blood shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven just a reminder to hold the cup till the end and we will drink together
blood of Christ, take and drink. Lord God, we join with churches around the world that are remembering Jesus Christ today. Remembering the sacrifice of when he took himself to the cross and died for me. He died for you. He died for all of the sins of mankind. An atoning sacrifice fit. The sacrificial lamb fit for all Thank you, Lord, for loving us that much to give your son. Thank you, Lord. We remember you today. We ask you to reign and live in our hearts and our minds and give us strength each day to walk in Christian faith. We ask these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, do you have any other kids out there? We just have Daniel today. No, Daniel, Daniel? Okay. Uh, children, ha ha um, children from age 3 to age 11 are welcome to head on down for Children's Church today. Uh. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh. It's a good day to be in God's house. Amen. It's a good day to worship him and be with him, commune with him and his Holy Spirit. What's been going on in your week? What's going on in your life? Praises, prayers, things that you want to share today. I have one to start off. You know, as Don Sanderson's not here today, um, he didn't say to share this, but he's fixing his son's roof today. And, and uh, we were praying that it doesn't rain through it. That's that's the that's the prayer today. Is that he's able to fix that in time or patch it in time so that there's no rain coming through that. So we're gonna pray for for Don today. Terry. God. It was a good time yesterday with men's breakfast, too. I enjoyed it as well. Yeah. Good time of fellowship. Barb. Uh, thank you for the prayers for my procedure and um, continue prayers for the results. Stay safe and hope for us all. That's, that's good news. All right. Praying for Barb's results, right? This is where, all right. Other prayers, praises? For those of you who've been following, uh, John Prescott's been uh, in, uh, in, and out, in and out of surgery and then in a, a care home for a bit, and I, I believe he came on Saturday, um, and they're, they're working it at home now to try to get him his physical and health recovery back going, so continue to pray for him and Jeanette as she's trying to take care of him and get him through that. So. Faith!
Yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah. good good to have the family of God around you, right? And to know Rhonda and Fox and, and Noah, you're not the God yet, but they both have hope. Yeah. Uh, Boyce and then Rhonda and Douglas with COVID there and, and their situation as well. Pray for them with that going on. Mike. Some repair in your trailer there and a faux four in the kitchen for people to help you out or someone of God to put someone in your life to help with that, Mike. We'll pray for that. All right. Other prayers, praises. Yes. Freeze cut. Excellent. Praise God. Did you have something, Mary? They're trying to hold on to that last little grip of summer that's out there. That you're holding on, so maybe traveling for that. Uh, I I love the fall. So when the wet, the, there was a storm and the, the temperature changed, and I'm I'm loving it right now. So it's it's going to be fall here soon. Those leaves are going to change, and uh, you know it's just the way God orders those seasons for us to have the enjoyment of the next season, the next the next thing. So yeah, we'll pray for protection for those who are traveling and. For all of our weeks to be as peaceful as you as you said. So Carly? I just want to offer praise that you Jimmy went to the pulmonologist and he said, you know, you are greatly improved. I'm very impressed. And you don't have to come back for six months. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. So for the doctors and the numbers are better. That means that his carbon dioxide level is lower, and his oxygen intake is better. Very good. Good. Very good. Secret to life, breathing in and out. That's why I tell people sometimes. All right, Lori. I call it. It's uh, 
that type of comic box home, and that's what we're building. If you look on the inside, there's three windows and a six foot patio door on the inside and a large patio door on the end with two regular rooms on the street side. But nonetheless, we're about 90% done. Wow. The sheetrock is done, the sheetrock finishing is done. My nephew put the floors in Friday. Yeah. Johnny's going to put the cabinets in this week. If you'd like to see it, stop and look. It's open. I can't answer all the questions that everybody has, but I see people looking and they want to, what is this going on? <laughs> stop and take a look. I think you'd be pleasantly surprised, as I was, because I didn't like it to start with. I said, what are you doing, Mookie John? A barber goes for anything. So. <laughs> I have to be very careful now, too, with barbers. She's always had a pistol for me. <laughs> so I, you know, kind of jet things out there a little bit. But the other day, she got a letter in the mail. Now she can carry concealed. I thought of that when you went to the gun laws and stuff here for it. That's the good part of that law they passed. That's the good part. So now I'm a lot more careful. <laughs> Jim, I just want to tell that Jerry, if you want to stop down and look at it, feel free to do it. It's open. And we'll continue to have it open probably until after the cabinets are in. I just want to know who I talked to about getting a tiny house, tiny house of my own, you know what I mean? That's what looks wonderful over there. You just been, you know, steadily uh, working the windows and all that kind of stuff. So it looks great. And it'll be placed on uh, a tractor trailer and move to our place in Florida. And if you wonder, it's kind of small, but it's as big as Barbara and I need anymore. But along one side, there'll be a, a sliding patio curtain, I guess you call it, or whatever you call it, put on the patio. So that whole side will be like another room. You can use when you want to one of the other two of that. It's called a Lunai. Oh. A lot? A Lunai. It's called a Sounds wonderful. And we're looking forward for you guys to be here. God has blessed us to be able to do it. I'm telling you. All right. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Other praises, prayers, things that we need to bring to the Lord's attention today. Things on your heart. All right, let's take these before God. We'll lift them up in prayer. You're welcome to join me at the altar rail up here. We're bowing your heads and hearts where you are as we pray. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for this day, this new day you have made. Thank you uh, for your church here at Mallory and continuing to guide us and help us and strengthen us in your ways. Let your spirit reign in our hearts and in our lives and refresh our souls today. We praise you and thank you for ministries like the men's breakfast and being able to share and, and be with other Christian men out in the public and, and just be having a good time and, and talking about topics that you know, need to be talked about sometimes. And we praise you and thank you for that. Praise you for the upcoming events of these retreats coming that would uh, help us as a church and as the Wesleyan Church and as different churches get together to praise you in these ways. We pray for Don Sanderson, who is repairing a roof right now. Um, help him and, and have, have his hands be steady and quick to be able to patch what needs to be patched um, so the rain doesn't get in there. Lord, we pray for John Prescott, and thank you for Jeanette, and pray for her as well. Um, as he's come home, um, and he's at home now, and she's taking care of him with hopefully other helps as well, and just um, guide his steps and help his healing recovery continue to happen faster and faster now that he's out of surgery. Lord, we thank you and praise you for uh, Barb's results with her, um, with her um, results there, and just uh, continue to guide her, um, heal her, help her uh, be healthy. We pray for Rhonda Douglas and Bob Floyd. Um, I believe Rhonda has uh, COVID at this time, and we're just concerned about uh, Bob and, and having COVID as well, and just continuing to protect them from any ill, any um, 
extreme disease that might go into that home, Lord, um, that you would just uh, keep them safe and help, help, um, help, help them heal fast or just help them completely recover and not have any symptoms uh, from, from this um, COVID. Lord, we pray for Mike and his uh, kitchen floor and uh, the different repairs that are needed there. Um, just guide him and help him to have a, a people in his life or a put people in his life that can help with things uh, like that when things get overwhelming or are too much for him or not the right expertise. We pray for Linda for healing. Um, I believe she's in the hospital at this time, and I ask you to help her and heal her. Be with the doctors, the surgeons, the medicines, the whatever is going and swirling all around her, that you would help her and heal her through and through, Lord. We praise you for this last week, um, whether it was a quiet week or a rough week, Lord, we give it all to you as a, as a, as a blessing, Lord, and, and we just thank you uh, for helping us. And we ask this next week as people are traveling that you would have a hedge of protection around them, um, that there would be no accidents, that you would just keep people safe um, in, in your ways, guide them, and have your angels be protecting people. We praise you for Jim Welch's uh, numbers being better, that he's able to breathe better and have more oxygen in his system, Lord, and we continue to praise you and ask you for prayers to help heal um, his breathing and his lungs and keep those numbers steady and good. We pray for Lori um, as she, her kidneys are, are recovered or are recovering, that you continue to bless her and help those, those things heal as much as needed and with all the follow-up doctors and visits and things that need to be done that she continues to proclaim that God is good and God is great healing her, healing these things. We ask for um, you to be with Tara um, as there's things going around in her, her life. Keep her focused on God as the most powerful, sovereign, and loving force in her life. Help her to stay rooted and knowing that God and Jesus is her Lord and Savior and just put a protection around her for anything uh, that's conspiring and happening in her life at this time. We pray for Mary's grandson, Dustin, um, for physical and mental healing, that you would guide him more, that you would help him and help him see that God working in his life and keep him safe through all this recovery and healing that's going on. Lord, thank you for your providence. Thank you for your graciousness to us, Lord. We continue to bless you today and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Like I said earlier, um, the, the computers kicked the bucket. As far as I can tell, we'll see if we if I can kick it the right way this week and get it back going again. Uh, but some of my sermon notes and things like that were on there, so I'm going to do my best to, to review the things I want to review. Um, the point, the main theme of what I wanted to say today is that God has plans for you and me and all of our lives. He wants us to be good stewards of his creation, good stewards of the faithful gifts that he's given us, good stewards of life. And he's also had a plan for Jesus Christ when he came to earth as well. And so what did Jesus do while he was here on earth? How did he take care of, you know, what, what was, was his goal uh, to be here for all of the church, to gather the disciples and make them apostles and eventually have the church and bring in the church age so that God could be glorified. Did Jesus come to earth to be the example for all? To say, you know what? Human being, you can live life in the spirit and have the fullness of the fruits of the spirit in your life. And you can exemplify God and glorify God through living in those ways. Did he come to earth to help the kingdom of God, to help us understand that not only is it about us here in this time, in this place, but there is an eternity waiting for you with a high priest, a king, that will love you and help you as long as you have believed and have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
you will have eternity with him. And to have an eternal perspective to say the troubles of today aren't the, aren't the greatest, aren't the big, because in the eternal perspective, it might be just a little speed bump or mosquito along the way. Well, Jesus was a multi-faceted person, and I think he did a lot of these things. I think he did all of these things. And I wonder if we look at the characteristics or the stewardship of Jesus and what he represented, what he was like. Because as Christians, we're called to be more like Jesus every day. How can we become more like Jesus if we don't know some of the characteristics or, or things about him? And how do we get to know these things? And so I wanted to highlight a couple of those today. I had a list of about 10 to 14 different things. Maybe I'll post it on the, on the site or something, but uh, in our lives, Jesus being a multifaceted person, it seems daunting sometimes to be able to do and be and step up to be all of those things that he was in our daily lives. First off was, I would say that Jesus exemplified the fruits of the Spirit, that he had all the fruits of the Spirit, and they were all going on all engines at all times. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who knows here the fruits of the Spirit? It's in Galatians chapter 5, if you want to look it up. If anyone know the fruits of the Spirit, they can say them from memory. Love, patience. Oh, come, come on, come on. You hear it louder. Love, patience. Kindness. You got it again? No? Oh no, it's a quiz. Pastor Andrew gave a quiz today. All right, you got it pulled up there, right? Yep, Pat. Ephesians, or sorry, Galatians chapter 5, verses uh, in the 20s or 23 or so. And so, for me to to have a couple going on, a couple and you know, a couple going at full speed in my life, I think I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I have them all, especially that self control one. Sometimes you know that gets gets a little away from us, doesn't it? Uh, but peace, joy, patience, kindness, gentleness, self control, all of these things. Jesus, as as we get to know him better, we want to display and have these fruits of the Spirit come forth in our life. Not because they're a to-do or, or don't-do list, but because as we get to know Him better, we just, they're going to flow through us. And I would say that all of these things on this whole list that I'm going to kind of go through today, it is a spiritual act of worship to practice self-control. To practice kindness, to practice joy, to practice love, to all these things in the fruits of the Spirit. It is a form of worship, and not only in us drawing us closer to God, but helping grow us to what God wants us to be. <clears throat> and so one of the things that on this list says, choose kindness. It's, it's one thing to be kind, but it's another to choose it. And I think intentionality is a big part of the Christian life. Because if we start to be a little lax or be a little, oh, I just got covered by grace or I just got covered by whatever, for choosing kindness or choosing this fruit or that fruit to say, I must enact or build myself or help, have God help me have that in that way. Now, the thing about Jesus is he had that Holy Spirit and you have the Holy Spirit inside you. We rely on that strength to help us to exemplify these different uh, fruits and to do that. Serve instead of waiting to be served. If I were to look at Jesus' character, who Jesus was and what he was trying to do on earth, he was a servant. 
to the point where, I think it was in the 90s, it might have been in the early 2000s, I, I was reading business journals and I was reading different things that were talking about servant leadership and Jesus being an example and exemplifying servant leadership because in the, in the 1980s it was all about fast money, profit, uh, step over who you needed to and there was this correction to say, no, as a business person I want to serve and by serving others will follow. And this is what Jesus did. He said that he was a servant and nothing shows that more or greater than the time when, at the Last Supper, he took out one of these things. It probably wasn't made at home like this one was. Uh, and he sat down and he wiped, washed his disciples' feet. The grimiest, ickiest job that had to be done because in the, in the sands, and everyone wore sandals, what would happen is you would track sand and dust in, and you'd have to wash your feet to go into a place or a restaurant or a place in order to be clean, and it was one of the dirtiest jobs around. And so he showed that he was a servant. He showed he was a servant in many, many different ways as well. Just being there for people in their lives. How many of you, if you had someone come off, come up off, off, off the street and said, "Hey, can you come help me with this today?" Or can you pray and, and heal this person down the street? Or you know, can you come and do this with me or for me? Would you be able to drop everything and just go and serve that person, and in turn serve God and show that example and characteristic of servant leadership in your life? Another quality was integrity. Hebrews chapter 4. I can get this one. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says to us. Oh, sorry. Uh, 14 says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who ascended to heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who had been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. So let us approach the throne of God, throne of grace, with the confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Jesus had integrity. Integrity to face the slings and arrows and the things that might be thrown against him in his, in his daily life. Jesus was without sin. You know, to be able to come at an issue or um, about an issue and be able to stand up against it or to, to be able to take it and not sin is, is the definition of integrity. We need to be able to have for ourselves a lifestyle of holiness, allowing us to be able to um, see things for what they are, as Jesus did. To be able to recognize that sometimes if someone's trying to dig on you or the temporary situation or the, the temptation that's in front of us, that's just a temporary thing. It doesn't have to rule you. It doesn't have to control you. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to make things idols in your life. Jesus is the true high priest, the one to be worshipped. He had an understanding of himself and relative to God the Father. If you look at Jesus' life and ministry, I'm going to tell you, he talked about God the Father more than he talked about himself. He pointed the direction exactly where all the praise and all the, all the important <clears throat> praiseworthy things need to go. And that was to God, his Father. And he knew he was just a steward. It was just a, it was part of God's plan, a part of the role that he had 
in, in that life to, to, to use his gifts to be, he even knew that he needed to die on the, die on the cross. That in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was praying, he knew that it needed to happen. And he asked God, can you take this cup from me? But he had the courage to follow through with what God had for him. And so part of being like Jesus, part of his understanding is you knowing yourself. You knowing what gifts God has given you, what role he has placed for you in your life. What part do you have to play here on earth to help glorify, save others, and, and help the kingdom of God reign not only here, but then beyond here. In John chapter 14, Jesus was talking to his disciples, and um, Thomas was talking with him, and the disciples were talking, and they were talking about what, you know, what, what's the, you know, you're going away, God, you're going away, Jesus, what, what's going on with that? Uh, where are you going? Can we go with you? And, and Jesus told him, exactly who he was. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. And from now on, you do know him and have seen him. And the disciples were all confused and they were asking lots and lots of questions back and forth to say, can we go where you are? How do we know your father if we know you? And all, all these great questions. But it shows that Jesus was solid in his identity. He, know, he knew his reasons. He knew who I was here. He knew what he was doing for his father. He knew his gifts. And he had that understanding. In, uh, in this list, I'm not going to cover these with scriptures, but there was a couple of things um, it, it listed out to strive for excellence. In most jobs, after I was, just about every job after I was saved, there were there were tipping points in my employment where I was like, wow, do I really want to work for this boss? Oh. <laughs> wow, do I really have to do this today or that today? And I said, you know what? I'm not working for this boss or this company. I'm working for God. And I have to recognize that in my everyday life, in my, in my personal life, in my work life, in my pastoral life, or all these lives, or this is my life, we strive for excellence. We try to be pleasing to the Lord through all of the things that we're talking about today, the fruits of the Spirit, everything. But also it's, it's that intentional effort to say we must give what we can. We must give our best. For we are the workmanship that God has created, you know, to have works for us to do. He has put and will put things in your life to do for him, to take action on, either to praise him or to help another person to serve with these different things that I'm highlighting today. To honor others. We need to honor our parents. We need to honor our loved ones, our elders, people around us. There, there are many people in authority around us that we need to honor and understand their roles in our life as well. God, Jesus honored his father, but he also, there was always questions about, hey, the law of Caesar or the Jewish law and all these kind of things. And Jesus was careful and meticulous that when he would speak about such things, he was not disrespectful. He was not just throwing it flavorfully back in their face. He used the word of God and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit inside of them to help show and teach and guide. To the point where I would say he used many, many opportunities to share the gospel, to share that people could have eternal life, that, that if you believe in me, if you believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that you will be saved and have eternal life to the point where heads were turned. And then in John chapter three, Here's an example of one. John chapter 3. Jesus is talking to this gentleman here. We'll call him a gentleman just to be nice, right? Nicodemus. 
Uh, John chapter 3. I'm going to read a lot of this, so hopefully it will help us understand Jesus' heart and how he shared the gospel and looked for opportunities to share truth with others in this one example. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you were doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter into a second time into their mother's womb and be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you that no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit, you should do nothing but be, you should not be surprised by it. He's saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from, where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, Jesus said. And do you not understand these things? <clears throat> Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify of what we have seen, but, you, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do, of earthly things that you do not believe. How will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven. The Son of Man, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes might have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is a, the verdict. Light has come to the world, but the people love the darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not become light for fear that the deeds will not be will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Jesus is sharing these things with Nicodemus to help him understand the glory, the wonder of the kingdom of God. That John 3.16 verse that I passed over in there is one of the most well-known verses in the world because Jesus saves. And we have to understand to take those opportunities. Nicodemus came to him in the middle of the night. They, they, now, did they organize that meeting? Did, did, was this a chance meeting? I'm going to tell you this is not the only example of Jesus saving somebody. Sometimes there were chance meetings out there. Sometimes there were intentional Sometimes Jesus will point to the person in the crowd and say, oh, let's have dinner at your house today. In our lives, how intentional are we to share these truths with people around us? In our lives, how intentional are we to spread the gospel? Looking for opportunities in casual conversation or any conversation that we come, come about. The other thing, two more things on this, on this list I wanted to cover today. One was the importance of our speech in general. You know, if we're going to share the gospel, we're going to share um, things, we have to be able to watch our tongue, let our yes be yes and our no be no, but also be truthful. One of the things that would have wrecked Jesus is if he were to be a liar or a deceitful person. And it will wreck your life too. 
in our modern world, I'm going to tell you, trust is the hardest thing that I, I can ask a hundred people, and I bet you they would say trust is one of the hardest things for them to build up or have in this modern culture and life. And truthfulness, being careful about what we speak, how we speak, is one of the most important ways that we can exemplify Christ in our everyday lives. He had the word of God on his tongue and on his mind and was able to whip, uh, whip it out when it was needed, sometimes correct or exhort people, but, some, but many times lift up and support and serve and help people in the times that they needed. You know, the Pharisees and people around him were so surprised at times how brief he would be. Get up and walk. How, how, how simple is that? You know, get up and walk. Your sins are forgiven. Get up and walk. Simple. And so in our language, sometimes we overcomplicate things. We make things about other things or we head down a rabbit trail that we need not, need not to head down. Pastors included, just so you know. Uh, but truthfulness, watching our tongue and being able to understand the power of the words behind what we're saying or what we're asking is part of what Jesus had and what we as Christians need to seek out. And the last thing today, and it was kind of the first thing, so it's, a, it's kind of a thing there. Uh, offer everything you do as an act of worship. Yes. When I am resting and snoozing and drifting off into sleepy land, I will say my prayers inside my head and pray for a couple of people that come to mind. And I'll tell you, there's times where some of you are on my mind and they'll be wrestling in my head a little bit before I'm trying to head off to dreamland. And I will pray for you. And I would ask you to do the same for me or others that come to your mind. And I'm telling you, the peace that comes in those moments to say, I gave that to God, and I know that God will do something powerful through that prayer. Helps me get to sleep at night. I had a friend, a good friend of mine, pastor's wife, long ago. She said she would be woken up at 3 or 4 a.m. many, many a night because she was a prayer warrior. And they had this person on their heart wrestling in their stomach, and they're like, I can't get rid of this until she figured out that's the time that she needed to pray. That's the time that she needed to dedicate to God. That everything you do as a Christian is an act of worship. And sometimes the signs and the things that are going on around us, we, we get distracted and we're like, why is this going on to me? I don't know what to go. I can't sleep at night. Give it to God. Help him clarify, understand, and guide what it is, what action you need to take in those moments. One of my favorite verses, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to view, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will for you. God has had a purpose for Jesus. God has a purpose for you. He will and has a call in your life. What that is, is between you and God. Now, I can point a couple of things out, maybe here and there, or good, 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 uh, solid things. But by investing in these things that I've covered today, kindness, servanthood, integrity, understanding ourselves and our role in relation to God, honoring others, truthfulness, and trying to spread the gospel message. These things, and the fruits of the Spirit themselves, these things, as we, by doing those, they are a spiritual act of worship, and they will draw you close to the Lord Almighty. But you need Him and His help to do it. You need to rely on His strength, not your own. That's the, that's the big thing in our American self-made culture, I think, that we have to recognize is that it's about surrender more than it's about strength. 
It's about understanding God's mercy and grace more than being perfect, perfection or perfect. And it's more about the action and the striving that help us continue to seek God in our everyday life. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this church and the message you have laid on my heart today. Thank you for guiding us. And I ask you to continue to have a guiding hand for all of us in this place to be able to, to step up our Christian faith in our lives in these ways, in these ways that help honor you through our lives of acts of worship and, and service to the kingdom of God. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
to not fall into temptation, but to be able to exemplify the fruits of the Spirit the way you did. Lord, help us to be more like you in many, many ways. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise